pedal is not just about pumping your foot on and off the beat. It colors and enhances the oral experience. But don't use it to cover up because it's not much of a concealer, but more of a highlighter. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. I'm your host, Fat Bitalan. Pedal hasn't been widely discussed. And it's quite a sensitive subject because a lot of people, myself included in my early days, use it as a clutch to hide from technical imperfections, physical limitations, and musical misunderstandings. But all you get is this mush of sound on intervals that doesn't really belong to each other and essentially not pleasing to the ear. Let's take a look at what the sustain pedal does mechanically. When you press the sustain pedal down, it lifts the dampers that holds the string down. But the depth in which you press the pedal determines how high the dampers will go up. Like see, I'm pressing really, 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 really slowly and if you notice, the dampers correspond to that pressure that I'm putting on the pedal. And I'm releasing really, 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 really slowly and it's coming down and it's coming down and it's corresponding to the release of uh, the weight off my foot. So essentially you can control how much the vibration can interact with each other. I'm going to take an example from Beethoven's C major variation from his 32 variations in C minor. So if um, first time I'll play it, I'll pedal it as one wood, probably all the way to the bottom and changing it every beat. Now, watch what happened if I pedal every measure. And, and I'm not gonna go all the way down, I'm only going to do just a tiny, tiny bit. And you have, you know, it'll create this halo effect. Haydn uses this in his famous C major sonata. If you plop your foot down to the floor of the pedal for this passage, it will be a catastrophe. To break it down in a very general broad sense, there are three ways to administer the pedal. On the note, before a note, and syncopated, or after the note. Sustained pedal also open up sound. When you press a key, the damper for that note lifts up, but not the others. So if you press the pedal after, all the other dampers will rise, now allowing the vibrations to interact with each other, creating a bloom in the sound. And this is how you create a crescendo effect on a note, or if you want to reiterate tied suspended notes. If you have this situation where you have a tight note, you can reinstate the pedal at the tight beat. People complain about the piano not being able to do a crescendo, that the string instrument or the woodwind instrument has this capacity to actually crescendo on a note. But that's not necessarily true because you could use a syncopated pedal for this. Uh, for example, at the beginning of the Schumann Carnival, where this is pretty much held for quite a long time and you have to kind of create this crescendo effect, you could use the syncopated pedal. So pedal, after you play the chord and press it down slowly as well as remembering not to weigh not to keep your weight down on the chord but you're also releasing it so it creates this kind of like wonderful bloom in the sound <laughs> If 
If you have a singing lyrical passage, I found that the best pedal treatment is to change on the note while releasing the previous note ever so slightly a little after. On the note does not just mean putting the pedal on the note. It can also mean to release the pedal on a note. And this is good for a sforzando effect, especially in the classical style. So in a sforzando case, if you put a pedal on a sforzando, yeah, it does gives it fervor, but there's another way of doing it. See, what? take a look at what this effect do. So what I'm doing is I'm going to, I'm gonna pedal before and then release on the sforzando. a different effect because you have this overtone and then when you release at the sforzando all the dampers goes down and kills the other overtone besides the chord that you're doing so it it has that a percussive impact that the other doesn't see it's too um, it doesn't gives you the key is to enter really quickly and then you release, but I'm keeping my fingers there, weightless. And here I want to change an effect of the sound because the passage continues. So here I would probably use the pedal on the sforzando. See, everything has, it's different. It depends on what you want to say. happens mostly at the beginning of the piece. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but at the start of a lot of the pieces that I demonstrated for you earlier, I always have the pedal down before I play because that gives you an opening. It opens up the string and it gives you a, a more ringing sound as opposed to if I do, So it's and besides see it, it it has a different effect. There's one more pedal technique that I should mention in this short brief video. It's the fluttering pedal. Usually used in scales or in any kind of situations where you don't want semitones or neighboring notes to kind of clash with each other, but you need the glow. All right, I'm gonna give you this example for the fluttering pedal. In Rahmaninoff's Moma Musico number no. four, this cascade right but you don't want to play it necessarily like a to toccata you need to hear everything but if you put it in one pedal it's disastrous you can't really hear anything so what i'm doing is i'm not i'm not pressing the pedal all the way down and i flutter i hope this opens up your curiosity about what the sustain pedal can do and brings you a set of ammunition that you could deploy at your own will. But most of all, I wish you the best end of year and a continued sense of joy in your day-to-day -day practice. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Ferdi Talan, and I'll see you next year.